Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me. You are going to learn about practical text classification with Python and Keras. My name is Douglas Starnes and I'll be your guide for the next half hour. This course is about natural language processing or NLP. The field of natural language processing studies how computers can parse and extract information from natural language. This is a big field, so in this course, you'll focus on a single task often used in NLP, sentiment analysis. The goal of sentiment analysis is to predict the mood of a body of text. For example, the text, that was the worst movie I've ever seen, would have a pessimistic or negative sentiment. The phrase, I want to watch that movie again, it was fantastic, would have an optimistic or positive sentiment. The course will begin with some simple examples using scikit-learn, and then it will get more advanced and close with building convolutional neural networks. Let's get started in the next video. I've set up a Jupyter Notebook on Google Colab, a free service for editing and hosting Jupyter Notebooks. I'll be referring to it throughout the course. You can follow along by cloning the notebook located at the URL at the bottom of the screen. Using Google Colab is done for your convenience. If you like, you can still download the notebook and run it on other services like Microsoft Azure or locally using a stock Jupyter Notebook server. The advantage of Google Colab is that all of the packages needed to complete the demo are pre-installed. And to get started, you just need to connect to a runtime hosted on Google servers with a single click. Before starting any data science or machine learning project, you should fully understand the data you are working with. This course will use the sentiment labeled sentences dataset from the machine learning repository located at the University of California, Irvine. You won't need to labor over the function get data. It simply uses modules from the Python standard library to download the dataset zip file, save it to disk, and then the extract data function to extract it. At this point, you can open the files tab in Google Colab and see a folder named sentiment labeled sentences, which is the contents of the dataset zip file. Note that the free tier of Google Colab is a shared service. If your session times out, and the resources are reclaimed, you will lose any files that you downloaded. In this case, it's not that big of a deal because you just download them again. But if you save any data generated by your notebook, it's a good idea to download it. The next function, rename data folder, cleans up the folder names to make the code more readable. Open the file Amazon cells labeled.txt and look at the contents. Each line has a sentence and then a sentiment score. For negative sentiment, the score is zero, while positive sentiment has a one score. And there are two other files for data from the Internet Movie Database and Yelp with the same structure. You're going to concatenate those files using pandas. First, import pandas and alias it as pd because data scientists don't like to type. Next, create a mapping between each file in the dataset and its source. Iterate over the files in the dictionary and read each one to a pandas data frame. Notice that even though you are using the read CSV function from pandas, you can specify any separator. The files in the dataset are tab separated, so use the SEP keyword argument to tell pandas to use the tab character instead. And the names keyword argument contains the names of the columns to be used in the data frame. Keep the source of each item by appending a new source column to the data frame. Then store each data frame in a list and join them together. Using the head method of the data frame will show the first five items. In the next video, you'll start to prepare the data for machine learning. This video starts off with some terminology. In the previous video, you combined the data from three sources, Yelp, Amazon, and IMDB, into a data frame. The data frame contains sentences, labels, and sources. 
The sentences are a collection of texts that you will use Scikit-Learn and later Keras to make predictions. This collection of texts is referred to as a corpus. If you drill down to the word level, the collection of unique words in the corpus is called the vocabulary. The reason why you use only the unique words is because each one will be assigned a unique index that will be used to identify the words during training. Machine learning algorithms don't like text, so we have to represent the text with numerical values. If you take each sentence in the corpus and convert it into a list of numbers using the indexes mapped in the vocabulary, you get a feature vector. This is a numerical representation of each sentence. Let's see how this works in more detail. The next cell in the notebook defines two sentences. You're not going to train a model using these sentences because there aren't enough of them, but you'll use the classes inside of Scikit-Learn to explore this concept of converting a corpus into feature vectors. In the next cell, import the count vectorizer class from the sklearn.featureextraction.txt module. Get a vectorizer which will consider all words, regardless of the frequency or the number of times they appear, and that is case sensitive. Tell the vectorizer to create the vocabulary from the sentences by calling the fit method and passing it the sentences. The vocabulary is found in the vocabulary underscore field. The vocabulary is a dictionary with the unique words as the keys and the indexes as the values. To get the vectors, call the transform method on the vectorizer and pass it the corpus, the sentences. This will return a sparse matrix from the SciPy module. Use the toArray method to display the vectors. Notice the structure of the vectors. The vectors are the same length as the vocabulary. For each sentence, a new vector is created, and for each word in the sentence, the index of the word is a 1 in the same index in the vector. For example, the first sentence is John likes ice cream, which is indexes 0, 5, 4, and 2. And the first vector has a 1 at indexes 0, 2, 4, and 5. A sparse matrix is a good choice when you have a matrix with a lot of unused values. Your vocabulary right now only has a half dozen words, so this might not be obvious, but later on you'll work with a larger vocabulary of over a thousand words. It's unlikely that even 5% of these words will be used in a single sentence. The number of unused words in each sentence will be quite large. You can reduce the size of the matrix by compressing that unused data and focusing only on the relevant data. And this is what a sparse matrix does. You've just created what is called a bag of words model. In the next video, you'll use this model to train a machine learning model using Scikit-Learn. While training a machine learning model, you'll often split your data set into two parts. The first part will be used to train the model, and the model is used to make predictions from new data. However, during training, your model will see the training data set over and over many times. It's possible that the model could get very comfortable with the training data and perform very well with it. However, when it sees new data outside of the training data, it might perform poorly. And this is a phenomenon known as overfitting. In other words, the model is fit too closely to the training data, and this is contrary to the goal of a generalized model that performs well on any data. One way to prevent or detect overfitting is to use the remaining part of the data set for testing. And this will give the model a chance to see data not in the training data set, and then you can evaluate the performance of the model. Let's take a look. You're going to focus only on the Yelp data for this experiment. Use pandas to filter the data frame and return only those items that have a source of Yelp. Next, get the sentences and labels from the data frame. The values field will extract the values of the columns into a NumPy array. Performing the split is not as straightforward as you might expect. One potential issue is that the labels might not be evenly distributed across the training and testing datasets. If you train the model on a dataset that is mostly positive sentiment and then test it on a dataset that is mostly negative sentiment, you're not going to be impressed with the outcome. In the module sklearn.modelSelection is the train test split function. This will create the training and testing datasets for you. 
first import the function. Then call the function, providing the sentences and labels, along with the percentage of the data to be used for the test data set. Here you'll use 25%. You'll find that there are a number of religious debates about the ideal split point, but usually it's going to be around 20 to 30%. In this case, for reproducibility, specify a random state of 1000. The function will return four values. The sentences in the training data set, the sentences in the test data set, the labels in the training data set, and the labels in the test data set. The next cell repeats the process you saw in the previous video to vectorize the sentences. Notice the size of the sparse matrix. The vocabulary is 1,714 words, and there are 1,000 sentences in the Yelp data, so 75% would be 750. Therefore, uncompressed, this would be 750 vectors of length 1,714. And this is a total of just under 1.3 million values. Now, how many sentences can you think of with 1,700 words? Or, for that matter, even 170 words? Well, it turns out the average length of a sentence in the data set is about 11 words, and the longest sentence is 32 words in length. Now you should be able to see this value of the sparse matrix. It's time to do some machine learning. You're going to use an algorithm called logistic regression. Without going too deep into the mathematics, the result of logistic regression will be a value between 0 and 1 inclusive. If you consider the lower values between 0 and 1 to be negative sentiment, and the rest to be positive, logistic regression can be used for binary classification. And that's all the math you need to know because scikit-learn provides a logistic regression class. Import the logistic regression class from the sklearn.linearmodel module. Then create a new instance and use the fit method to train a model on the training data. Then use the score method to test the model and the model is about 80% accurate. Before training the model on the entire data set, I want to call attention to the amount of code written to prepare the data versus the amount of code written to train the data. Even if you leave out the vectorization experiment, which is only about half a dozen lines, you wrote a lot more code to prepare the data. And this validates a common feature of machine learning. Up to 80% of your time is spent preparing your data. Because garbage in, garbage out you may find that you're not spending as much time as you expected writing code for actually machine learning. Now, I'm not going to labor over the next piece of code because there is not really that much new. All it does is repeat the logistic regression on each source in the data set and print the score. You'll see that the Amazon data set, the score is similar to Yelp, and IMDB is a little worse, but not terrible. Now that you understand the process of sentiment analysis, in the next video, you're going to see neural networks for the first time.